In this video, we'll quickly review the enzymes which are involved in DNA replication. This is a high yield video for CSIR NET, IIT JAM, GET or GATB. If you are preparing for any of these exams, this would be super useful for you. So stay tuned till the end. So this is the replication fork and let's quickly review the enzymes which are associated with it. So we are looking at the prokaryotic scenario. This is the DNA polymerase 3, which is the principal DNA polymerase involved in the replication procedure. It synthesizes new base pairs. It has distinct components like clamp loader, sliding clamp, tau protein, and we would review this in a bit more details later on. Then there are primase, which form the RNA primer required for the DNA synthesis. Then there is DNA helicase, which unwind the DNA, double-stranded DNA. And there is DNA gyrase, which is basically a type of topoisomerase, which uh, introduces negative supercoils in the DNA. And thereby, unwound the, it unwound the DNA in a meaningful way, such that the entire process of replication can happen. And the DNA doesn't entangle too much. So now let's quickly zoom into the overall uh, enzymes and try to analyze their function. So first, let's talk about the DNA gyrase. DNA gyrase is topoisomerase type 2. Its function is to relieve the torsional strain introduced during the uh, replication process. It breaks the DNA molecule and relieve the torsional strain. So it prevents the DNA supercoiling during the unwinding process. Then there is DNA helicase. Obviously, it unwinds the double-stranded DNA molecule by breaking the hydrogen bond within the base pairs of the DNA. And it's important is to create single-stranded DNA template for replication. Then there is primase, whose function is to synthesize short RNA primer, which is complementary to the DNA strand and thereby start the process of DNA synthesis. It kind of gives the polymerase a... Uh, primer to start the entire synthesis. So the DNA polymerase cannot start the process by itself. This small RNA primer is the key step for synthesizing the DNA. Then the DNA polymerase, obviously the main job of the DNA polymerase is to synthesize new strand. Basically it can extend the existing RNA primer at the 3' hydroxyl group. It can incorporate nucleotide in the 3' hydroxyl group. Obviously, this lead to the incorporation of new base and this is the copier. So this copies the entire template strand and add up new nucleotide against that particular template strand. Now DNA polymerase 3 enzyme is the key uh, enzyme involved in prokaryotic replication. So it has different components, almost nine subunits. Here is a clamp loader or gamma complex. Here is sliding, sliding clamp. Sliding clamp is loaded by this particular clamp loader complex. And this is tau protein. Extra crystallographic structure reveals this kind of nitty gritty structural details. And each of these structural details reflects on its functionality as well, which we have already reviewed. Now there is another thing which is called single strand binding protein which binds to the single stranded DNA and prevents its re-annealing. Otherwise it would have re-annealed and formed the base pairs again. So these keep the DNA as a single stranded template such that the replication process can happen. Then the last enzyme is DNA ligase. It joins at the discontinuous Okazaki fragment on the lagging strand. So basically it forms the last phosphodiester bond. So if we zoom into those broken region you can see the 5 prime phosphate phosphate group is uh, free and the 3 prime hydroxyl group is there between these two a phosphodiester bond would be formed and that is triggered by the ligase and it's a atp dependent uh, reaction so obviously for replication and many steps associated with replication atp is required now at the end which is very important we should revise quickly the type of polymerase present in bacteria and the eukaryotes so when it comes to prokaryotic DNA polymerase, the principal DNA polymerase is the DNA pol 3. It is involved in the chromosome replication. Then DNA pol 1 is generally used for primer removal and DNA repair. DNA pol 2 and pol 4 both are involved in DNA repair. Pol 5 is involved in translation DNA synthesis, which is an SOS repair process. Let's talk about the eukaryotic scenario. In the eukaryote, the DNA pol delta and epsilon are the major one. The delta is associated with lagging strand synthesis, whereas the epsilon is associated with leading strand synthesis.
Then there are other variants as well like Genepol Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Theta, Mu, Kappa. Then there are many more. But the DNA-Pol alpha is important and gamma is important. Gamma is a three subunit comp complex which is required for mitochondrial DNA replication. DNA-Pol alpha is important for primer synthesis. So this has the primer's activity. And DNA-Pol beta is important for the base excision repair. This particular info sheet is really important for any kind of competitive exam. So I hope this was useful. Let me remind you that the replication initiation in the prokaryote is very different than the eukaryote. In eukaryote, there are involvement of cyclin CDK complexes, especially the S phase cyclin, and there are associated components with it. So it's a bit dif different in case of eukaryote. If you want to learn more about the eukaryotic versus prokaryotic initiation part, you can click on the video on the I button to get the detailed explanation of it. See you in the next video.